Hi, my name's Liz and welcome to my channel. This is actually week 11 of my weekly grocery challenge. And if you've never been here before, I'm just going to spend 12 seconds explaining to you what the goal is. I'm going to make dinner on a budget that my picky teenager will eat. And basically it's just so we don't spend money that we don't have. And I am not a chef. I am just a full-time working parent with a hangry, hangry teenager. A very average kitchen and I am just trying to break this you know what's for dinner or that sounds boring rut that I get from a teenager all the time and to add an unusual layer this week is loosely themed instant pot week asterisk no pot roast but really even if you don't have an instant pot I'm making recipes that I find online and I guarantee you everything that I make this week can be made on a stovetop and actually in some cases it's probably easy to just make them on the stovetop and the ultimate goal is just to save money. So I have $100 for grocery shopping and $20 dining out budget. I'll take you through my week, which is a Friday through a Thursday for me, so you can see what I spent and what we made. This series basically focuses on dinner, but if you have some questions about what we do for breakfast and lunch, let me know in the comments below. Friday and Saturday nights are usually leftover or takeout nights for us. This past weekend, my son was with his friends both nights, so it was it was pretty basic. I'm pretty lazy. Cereal for dinner and leftovers for me. I mean, no brainer, I don't wanna do dishes. Sunday nights are our breakfast for dinner night, and I made instant pot sausage gravy with, just because I'm lazy, regular refrigerated dough biscuits. They were on sale at Kroger, that's why I used them. Fun fact, I I didn't know what these biscuits were until I moved to the United States. Like we didn't have refrigerated dough biscuits in Australia. I also didn't know what a drive through bank was. Um, so yeah, but I really, I, I love this country and I do not like when anyone else criticizes the United States and I don't like when people criticize Australia, but I do have two very strong and divisive food opinions. And the first is that cake donuts are a far superior donut to a yeast donut. And the second is that sausage gravy and biscuits basically end up like glue in your stomach. And I will share on the screen something that I wrote in 2020. And I received a lot of scorn from my Facebook friends. They're obsessed with biscuits and gravy. And so last week I asked Erin Budgets aimlessly, she's my reverse twin, she's an American in Austria, if she and her husband like them, I know she doesn't eat gluten, but she said that he eats his weight in them when they're back in the US. So I know people in the US, you're just very passionate about them. But back to this dinner, I made this in the Instant Pot and really you could make this on the stove. But if you're hosting Thanksgiving this year and every burner on your stove is taken with other breakfast making goodies, Consider this as an option for you. And my son said the very words that every struggling and exhausted parent wants to hear. He said, make this again. Monday night is kind of like our country cuisine night. I, I, I had to give myself theme nights to try and be inspired, otherwise I'd make the same thing. So I did scroll the internet for chicken in the Instant Pot that doesn't look ugly or taste gross. And I found this recipe for a Filipino version of adobo chicken. And and I had to make this based on the reviews. And I, I'm going to admit this to you. I have never once written down a note of something to share with you guys after a meal, but I did with this one. And I wrote that I wanted to share with you. It's like salt and vinegar chips had a baby with a chicken. I mouthgasm. I, I don't know what else there is to say about this. Between the vinegar and the soy and the sugar, I wanted to smash my face in this. And online reviews said to make double the sauce. And I do have that regret. I didn't. Now, my son was not delighted about eating chicken that was still attached to the bone. And, and I don't love that either. But when I reheated this for leftovers for lunch. It was like everything that you would want from the lightest and tangiest sweet and sour chicken. And I'm still dreaming of it. On Tuesday night, I tried to go meatless and well, I realized we were adding bacon. So we're just gonna consider the bacon aside and not the main dish. And it's just good old Instant Pot loaded baked potato soup. But here is what I loved about this version. You just have to peel the potatoes and you don't actually have to chop them. And it's perfect if you're the lazy, tired person at the end of the day, because 
I hate recipes that are too fiddly and I really don't want to cook one thing in one dish and then I'll assemble something in the other. So I did cheat and then around lunchtime I made the potatoes in the instant pot so that was one less thing to do at dinner. And the best part about this is just letting out some aggression with mashing the potatoes when you're done cooking them. If you like it chunky, you leave it chunky. And if you like it smooth, you make it smooth. And I absolutely could have added more salt to this. I could have thinned it out a little bit, but I didn't. It was chunky soup. And if you know me and my past food videos, I like it chunky. Wednesday, Wednesday was a bit of a novelty. It was raining and I love, I love some moody rainy weather and when I was figuring out what we were going to make this week for dinner for, you know, instant pot week, the rule was not pot roast. My son hates pot roast. So I found this Tex-Mex beef stew. It's stew. It's not pot roast. So like the rules are still intact, right? And I, I put this to you. Please make this. If you're a vegetarian, substitute for beans if you want heat if you want the spice add the heat add the spice and i don't i just don't know what else to say about this but i actually had a vision of pitting this meal against monday night's chicken dinner on this vlog and literally trying to figure out which one i loved more so yeah that's what was going on in my head as i was eating this and don't laugh at me i've i've never cut a poblano pepper before i don't know my pasty white body and i don't do well with a lot of heat but this was pleasantly warm for me. Like I said, if you like spice, you make it spicy. And my son, as I was making this, kept coming out. Is it ready? Is it ready? And he was so impatient. So there's some crazy things that you have to do at the end. You add fritos or corn chips, like sort of like a masa. At, you add it at the end to thicken it up. And then you also add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Kind of weird, but okay. I follow the ingredients. Yeah. The recipe does call for a hint of cinnamon. So if you don't like that, leave it out. I also omitted the cilantro because I don't like, you know, soap in my mouth. Based on the online reviews though, it was strongly suggested to replace the water with beef broth. And that was an amazing piece of advice. So if you are looking for something amazing to make, please try this. And if nothing else gives you any more incentive to make this, here is a screenshot from my son of his number one meal this week. I am quickly learning that Thursday night is just my night of the week where I am exhausted. I just fall apart. It's taken me 11 weeks of doing this series to realize that this is just a sign that I need to have something. Otherwise, my default is let's order out. Let's let's get takeaway. I'm ready for the weekend and my plan ended up just being frozen pizza. Is it Instant Pot? No, but it's what Liz can do with her body. So my son requested takeout pizza last week and there's just, there's not room in the budget for this, but this frozen pizza was on sale at Kroger for $3 and I felt like we could do that. So it just felt like the natural thing to do for the kid. He could eat his pizza while I enjoyed my beloved bowl of cereal for dinner along with a frozen toasted waffle. And here's what I bought from the grocery store and what we spent at Kroger. First trip, 21.05. Kroger, second trip, 61.01. Went to Aldi after that because there were some things in my pickup order that they didn't have. So I spent 4.38 at Aldi and then back again later in the week at Kroger for 5.44, which is just, it's $92 that I spent on groceries and we had $8 to spare. I also spent $4.96 at Dunkin' Donuts. So we did great with $15 of savings in our dining out budget. And if you know from the past couple of weeks, I went way over in, well, I went over in dining, not more than what I'd be comfortable with. And here is the most recent comment of the video. And I had to whittle this down because there were so many great comments, but I went with something simple today. Uh, Katie making me laugh, thinking that I sound like I'm Gollum from Lord of the Rings. And if you don't know who Katie is, she's a little bit nerdy and I love that, which is why she gets a jigsaw puzzle, but please go ahead and visit her channel. She is doing this amazing spreadsheet based savings challenge starting in November. I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, but there's some giveaways attached to it. So please go and support her channel, motivate her, show us some love and appreciation because I definitely always appreciate her making me laugh on my channel. 
$15 of savings in if uh, it blah, blah, suggested to replace the water with beef broth, beef, 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 which is Thursday through, no, it's Friday, Friday through Thursday. So you can see what I spent and what we made. And I had another point that I was going to share with you. And now I've completely forgotten. Sunday nights are our breakfast. Jeez, Liz. Like mouthgasm. I, I don't know what else to say about this. Between the Viet... Cook one thing in one dish and then assemble something in the other. Oh, go away. And if you like today's video, you may like this one too.